Legend truck number five, the very first one that has received the total legend package. This was really the one that kind of got it all started, the vision. It took a little longer to get across the finish line than some of the previous trucks uh, that all ended up being survivors. But this particular 1976 square body, this was the one that Chris Gray rendered years and years ago. This was the one that popped in my head one sleepless night thinking about building production C10s, K10s, and here we are. And we finally got this thing wrapped up, and man, is this truck cool. This is a totally different beast than any of the other Legend trucks, primarily because it is over the top. Fit, finish, interior, this thing is just super duper detailed. So let's back up, right, like five, six years. We had the concept sitting around thinking like, man, we've done a lot of muscle cars. What's next, man? What's the next trend? What do we want to do? And the relatability of these square body trucks, it was something that just kept coming up. Like everybody has a connection to a square body truck. Your Uncle Mike had one. Grandpa Dave, fucking Grandpa Dave had a crew cab. Like I grew up in the back of that thing. You know, the point being somebody in somebody's family or that person themselves has a story about a square body truck. I grew up with them, my dad had tons of them. So the concept was, let's do something rad with them, right? It's not that we discovered them, right? There's plenty of people doing them, but nobody was taking them to this level and making a drivable four by four. To me, it's the quintessential truck. It's the baddest ass, toughest looking truck of all time. And they look cool lowered. Don't get me wrong, we've done a lot of them. My brother's got a really bitchin' one. But it doesn't look as cool as it does when it's lifted, right? So on 35s, the right stance, the right tire, this is just the ultimate package, man. It is the ultimate pickup truck hands down. So we did a lot of things different on this particular truck than the previous trucks. Full paint and body on this truck, all the trims restored, everything on the exterior was kind of treated like a restoration, except the paint and body is definitely a step up from there. So did some work blending some of the panels. These early trucks, they were never meant to fit real great. So the transitions from the doors into the fenders, the doors into the cab, not super good. And we didn't get over the top, worked it a little bit, straightened some of that stuff out. Just makes for a really beautiful truck. Factory colors on it, so it's a Catalina blue. These old metallics, big chunky metallics, you just can't replace the look, right? Thought about supplementing it with something modern and playing with some colors, but it's hard to beat. I'm a blue guy. Everything I ever want is blue. I'm attracted to blue. I want this exact truck. I'm gonna have this truck. So I've got a tan one, the very first prototype. And every time I get in this truck, every time I look at this truck, I start thinking about taking mine apart, taking it to the next level and doing a full blown, all inclusive legends build. Now, the thing about this truck is that it is high end, right? This is a truck that you're probably not at this point going to be tossing lumber in the back, taking it off road. And you've seen some of the gnarly stuff we did with my prototype truck. It's just too pretty for that. I like to look at this more like a, like a Denali pickup truck, right? It's the next level, not necessarily a work truck, super functional. You do anything you want with it, drive it every day, haul something if you want, fully equipped to do all that. But it kind of bridges that gap of like, holy shit, this thing's like borderline show quality. This is something you could take to a car show and it'll stand out from the crowd 100%. We just had this truck out at SEMA, huge hit. It just tugs on the heartstrings of everybody, I feel like. You know, it's it, it, it's not a departure from what was and everybody just digs it. I just love everything about this truck, but the thing that stands out the most is when you're inside it. That's where the majority of the time was spent. And we worked with our good friend, Jeremy Carlson over at Avant Guard. You've seen a number of cars that we've done some videos on that Jeremy's just knocked out of the park and this one's no different. This truck started as a complete scan of the interior and at a glance what might look like a fairly stock square body interior is the 
furthest thing from it. The door panels, completely solid modeled, 3D printed. I mean, I don't even know where to begin. It, this thing is like never ending with details. The chrome trim around the door panel, all machine stuff, right? This insert, hydro dipped, sprayed in a satin clear, 3D printed, does utilize the factory door handle, full leather dash pad, hand stitched, the gauge cluster itself, same treatment with the hydro dip wood grain. So the hydro dipping, kind of a cool thing, right? For years, I've always, I hate to say it, I've, I've kind of looked down on it, right? It, it looked like something you'd do to your paintball gun. You know, something kind of like cheap. This is the furthest thing from, from what this is. I mean, this is awesome stuff, man. You can mask it. It's hydro dip while the chrome is retained around the gauge bezels. That's all masked. Uh, there's a base coat beneath it to alter the color of it. A satin clear over the top. I've honestly, I hate to say it, but I forgot the dude's name that did this and he's going to kill me. So I'm hoping Elliot can get creative and let's plug him because this stuff just looks bitch. And the guy, he knocked it out of the park, helped us get across that impossible SEMA crunch. The passenger side dash insert, same shuffle, masked everything, hydro dipped the center, satin cleared it, flat blacked it. There's a cool little Legends machined emblem sprinkled in there that lands right in the middle where the factory one was. So everything in this, it really like pays homage to what was. It's just a hell of a lot nicer. So the way the door panels fit, tuck into the dashboard the map pockets on them a cool little magnetic catch on it we wanted it to look very original but just better that's what we did that's what we accomplished chris gray helped out greatly here this was a uh, kind of his vision he sketched this up years back we've tweaked it a little bit here and there you know throughout the years had an awful long time to think about this one and see it come together but yeah it's just god damn it looks good kick panels factory standard legend stuff that's something we do on every one of our legend trucks same 3d printed part with the grill inserts for the shallow morel three ways vintage amp material polished bezel that surrounds it everything flows together wool carpet that's uh got a cool binding around the perimeter of it fits the theme fits the era it just looks classy i, I wish i had like a what is this a bolero texas tie i need a texas tie and a charlie one horse hat i feel like driving this thing Some of the neat things too that you just to see them in a slightly different configuration our legend truck steering wheel so that's our standard legend product it's got the 3d printed center that mimics the uh, original square body wheel but this particular one we had hand sewn with a alcantara suede that's the same material that's on the headliner so it's like a little bit of race car feel and it's a sporty truck it's it's neat to see it where it's just not all black you're used to seeing this wheel black with the wood grain yeah this is a sharp look man it just a, a little departure from what we typically do and it's a little edgy right this truck would have been super simple to just naturally go with like a dark brown interior but we've got this cool distressed leather that's uh i don't know what you'd call that tan or a sandalwood i don't know camel so within that bench seat a few things you need you know i cheap not cheapened out and i needed some cup holders in mine so I grabbed like the JC Whitney Universal console, which is kind of embarrassing. I hate to say it, but this one, pretty cool little piece, right? You've got the ability to flip out your cup holder, little stash spot there, throw two drinks in it. You can stow that away as needed. And then boom, that guy tucks away. If you've got a uh, hot little number with you that you want to slide on over to the center, which that's probably going to happen when you're driving a truck like this. Really want to do some canvas, wax canvas inserts in these seats. And I ordered the material and I played with it and I played with it. And I just knew that there was going to be that one time that I'm getting out with a pocket knife or something and you just carve it, right? I don't think the wash and wear is there, but the look of this Alcantara insert, really good. Seating position in a square body is super duper important and as you guys know because you've probably watched a handful of these videos you know i'm a huge dude i'm a massive guy so it is difficult for me to sit in these not the case right i can fit in one of these with a stock seat and probably a pillow behind me and i'm good but most of our customers they cannot right so we got some big dudes six foot something guys jumping in these trucks and the seating position's awful on them that's kind of the deterrent of why a lot of guys love the truck but don't necessarily want one so what we've done one off bench seat in this truck worked with jeremy carlson on getting just right seating position is key so it really slims the seat out it keeps you kind of tucked in it you got a little bit of bolstering so you feel like you're kind of planted in the truck and then the square body syndicate column that's in it that shoves this steering wheel about two inches away from me from what the factory one would and with the shallower depth of this wheel and hub adapter 
that also gains us about another half inch. So creating a heck of a lot of interior space in a truck that otherwise is pretty compact. So, right, I'm sitting in this thing, it's a perfect reach, arm straight out, boom, lands right on the wheel. Now you can tilt that up from there if you're a big dude. It gets pretty roomy. Tilt that down from there if you wanna pull a Josh. You know, if I'm Josh, this is how we and I'm rolling like this, right? But I'm not Josh, so I'll drive like a normal human being, like a respectable human being. You're smaller than me. No, I, we, I think I'm <laughs> way more than your frail ass at this point. <laughs> it's not nice. And boom, right in the middle, the truck just feels really good. Mechanically inside, vintage air AC controls, utilizes their Gen 5 uh, AC unit in it now. Below it is our standard legend package. So kicker head unit tied into our billet bezel that lands right in the factory proportions of the stock dash. Our four x four rotary switch is on my left right here. Again, doesn't disrupt any of the factory dash proportions and tucks right in there. So on the fly, two wheel drive, boom, four wheel drive, back in two. That's the beauty of this thing. If you're gonna really use it, in and out of two four wheel drive and we're closing in on winter. This one's probably a little too pretty to put in the salt, put in the snow. Mine's staying on the road. So I've already utilized that four wheel drive. I try to keep her out of the salt. I try to rinse it off, getting to the end of that season. But we've been through a few inches of snow already. I mean, it's a great convenience to have at your fingertips. So let's talk about the chassis. We've done a number of legend videos, but for those of you who haven't seen them, this truck sits on one of our legend series roadster shop chassis. So what's a legend series chassis? It is a push button four wheel drive chassis that utilizes a lot of factory GM components to make up an independent front suspension with power rack and pinion steering. So you get the modern drivability of a brand new truck. And I'm not kidding, this thing is 100% as nice as a brand new optioned out top of the line pickup truck, if not better. The drivability, the ride quality, the steering feel, it's unmatched. You never get fatigued of driving it. It doesn't tire you out. The ride quality is super good. So ripping down the highway, you can cruise this truck at 80, 90 miles an hour if you want, and you just always want to be in it. You know, that's always a sign of something that doesn't ride good, doesn't handle good. It's got little nuances. It's got things that almost fatigue you as a driver and make you want to park it and not use it. Owning one, I'm just the opposite. I look at that sitting there next to a 3500 Dually. That's my other option to drive. Now, granted, it's a little longer wheelbase. It's a little inconvenient, but I would much rather be behind the wheel of my Legend truck. So the chassis is the key to that whole platform, right? LT1 or LT4 powered with 8L and now 10, 10L 90s behind them. This particular truck is the naturally aspirated LT1. So 460 horsepower, which I think is enough for this truck. Very civilized, very high-end truck. You don't need to be doing burnouts and gnarly stuff in it. I think the LT1 suits this truck really well. I'm still not ready to give mine up as an LT4, but this thing's fun, man. It's got enough power to rip, but it's very civilized. When you open the hood on the truck, it looks a lot different than what you would expect from maybe a standard Roadster Shop build. You know, you might think Roadster Shop and you're looking at some of the stuff we've built in the past. And you'd like to think that this thing's gonna be super custom under the hood, only to open it and it looks essentially like a bone stock truck. A lot of work went into making that happen, right? That didn't happen by accident. We spent a great deal of time in the engineering side routing every single mechanical feature, planning the reservoirs where the reservoirs need to live, sourcing the right components to where it doesn't look like a hot rod, it doesn't feel like a hot rod. You pop the hood and it feels like, looks like, functions like a brand new truck. Serviceability, durability is all there of a brand new truck. These things are meant to pile miles on and don't touch them, right? Change the oil, wash it, detail a little bit, and that's all you need to do. Factory GM brakes, any auto parts store can supply you with replacement components for that. Change them when you need to change brakes. What's that, 40,000 miles? I'm 23,000 into mine, brakes are still going strong. But you'd be surprised at how well those OE components work, especially when you retrofit them into a package like this. So uh, not to say anything bad about some of the awesome companies that we work with, but those factory components, man, do they work good. You got a 12 bolt rear end out back connected to the chassis through some Devers multi-leaf uh, 
kind of a progressive leaf spring. Fox shocks on all four corners, coilover conversion up front, specifically valved for us for these Legend Series trucks. So drivability wise, it's kind of tough to sit and talk about what this truck does. It's an eerie feeling that you are not at all in a vintage truck. And right down to the wind noise. I mean, this thing, the wind noise, road noise, everything, we've insulated this truck beyond belief. It's been a great deal of time tightening up everything in it. So going down the road, this truck is dead quiet and so tight. It, it's honestly, it's, it's very difficult to sit here and try to talk about what it does because that's the equivalent of driving down the road in your brand new Denali and trying to do a review video. I don't know how those guys do it. I've never listened to those because you just expect it to work really well. And that's what this does, works really well. It's fun, sporty little truck, you know? It's, uh, it gets around the curves, stays flat, accelerates out of it good. That eight speed clicks down the gears, boom, powers right where you need it. A lot of goodness going on here, fellas. Lots of goodness. I think you'd be hard pressed to beat this as a daily driver. I really do. It's got a hitch on the back, tow a small trailer, throw your stuff in the back. You got to respect this one because it is a step above, several steps above our standard survivor type legend trucks. But man, what a killer daily. The only thing bad about this truck is talking to people. You're going to be the center of attention no matter what, I guarantee it. So. Gets great fuel mileage. Try to minimize your stops at gas stations. Do them at night when nobody's around. And then you don't have to talk to anybody. So it's crazy to see one of these come together like this. When we started this program, we put the prototype truck together, which is my tan truck. It's a little rough and rugged, more of a survivor type build. But the vision was always this exact truck. This was numero uno, the very first one that we rendered. And this is what we planned on building over and over again. However, everybody that saw the patina prototype truck wanted a patina truck. So we ended up with, man, close to a dozen patina truck builds that we're working our way through. But this particular customer wanted something a little bit nicer. Amazing customer, local guy. This truck's built for a dude named Vince who is building a hell of a car collection because this truck is going to live in a garage right next to the Road Rage Camaro. That's gonna be a hell of a look, man. Kinda of unfair. That's a that's a hell of a flex right there. That is a nicely stacked garage. Good taste, Vince. Vince got some good taste, man.